Hi, welcome to CareStream NDT YouTube video channel. I'm Steve Mango, Technical Manager for CareStream NDT, and today I'm going to show you how to use the diagnostic tool to monitor all the basic functions of your system. So you've seen us make some images and operate the software. We're plugging along uh, happily along our way day after day, but at some point we want to look at our system and make sure that day after day and week after week it's behaving in a consistent manner and an optimum uh, manner uh, such that it performs and produces the kinds of images that our design engineers and, uh, and manufacturing engineers intended to uh, operate at. So we have a tool to do that. It's called a diagnostic tool. And what this is, it's actually a very precision instrument. Uh, there's a certificate of conformance. It says that it's accurately calibrated in the factory. And what this is, it's a, uh, it's a phantom, which doesn't look like much on the outside, but inside this thin material is a uh, copper plate with very precise uh, apertures and holes cut in it. We call that a phantom. And what we do is we put that in registration with a cassette. Okay, inside the cassette is a high-res imaging plate. Uh, this all comes together as one kit, by the way. Also in the kit is this plastic registration tray. So I'll put the cassette in the tray and I'll put the phantom on the cassette that registers the image in a certain location on that and I get that whole thing, not the case of course, but I get that tray, put it in my x-ray cabinet and I make a prescribed exposure on here at a certain KV and certain dose and a certain filtration. I have filters here somewhere which is a uh, Somewhere I have a half a millimeter of copper and one millimeter of aluminum. That makes the beam nice and consistent and uniform. I'll put that on the tube, copper closest to the tube. And I'll make that exposure through the phantom and get that cassette, put it in the reader, read out that image as a Dicondi 12-bit image. In addition to the phantom, if I make another image without the phantom, just that same exposure, on the cassette and produce a flat field exposure, the software can also uh, analyze uh, a whole array of uh, uniformity parameters from that flat field. So it just takes two images, the phantom and a flat field, to tell you everything you could possibly need to know about the performance of your imaging system. So let's take a look at the diagnostic software and see what it can do. The diagnostic tool is a standalone program, so I don't need my Industrix uh, digital viewing software. I'm going to hide that and come to my diagnostic uh, icon, HPX1 diagnostic tool, and double click on that, and it's going to bring up this user interface which shows me a phantom test and a flat field test and all the individual measurements and parameters it can analyze in each of those tests. In the phantom, it'll calculate uh, pixel size, aspect ratio, the scan, nonlinearity, exposure latitude, uh, MTF or sharpness, and pixel placement. For the flat field test, it'll analyze and display field uniformity, transport chatter, line position, banding and streaks. It'll do a signal to noise measurement as well as an overall image noise measurement. And why are these parameters important? Well, again, you want to make sure that your diagnostic images that you're using for examination are performing to the best manner possible and giving you accurate results that you can rely on. So, in each case here, if I click the perform test, it'll go to a specific folder where I have put that phantom or flat field image and do these uh, analyses automatically. So right now, I'm going to go down to one that I've read previously, which is in my list of history files, and I'm going to look at a typical flat field image by clicking on that one. In this case here, all the parameters passed. I got all green lights. It'll show me a snapshot of that image, which is really nothing more than to assure you that you acquired the image correctly and got the entire image. Uh, let's look at another one that might have some failures or warnings in there. That one's also all passed. It's very easy to pass everything, but it's not quite so easy to get some warnings and failures, but I think I might have one in here. Let's look at another. See, there's one. Uh, in this one here, I simulated some failures by 
by tapping on the reader during the, uh, the, during the scan and I, I altered my exposure so that the signal to noise calculation went askew. But if I have an, uh, a test where I have any uh, warnings or failures, what I'll do then is go to this log tab and I can look at the individual tests and see exactly what went wrong. In this case, it'll tell me what the actual value was and what the thresholds were for warnings and failures. So I've got some chatter. Uh, I've got a streak, and it'll tell me the magnitude of the streak. And for signal to noise, in this case, it doesn't mean that there was something inherently wrong with signal to noise. But on the other hand, the exposure that was used to calculate signal to noise was a little bit too far out to make that a reliable reading. So we don't want to, uh, we don't want to rely on that if that exposure was way out. So we'll make that either, uh, we'll throw a warning or a failure if the exposure was way out. Let me look at some of the uh, phantom tests and see if I can find one with some, uh, some warnings or failures there. See, these are all passed. The system's very robust. You'd really have to do something uh, wrong or improper exposure or, you know, kick the reader, you know, to make some of these fails. But all you're looking for is to get green or maybe a couple of amber lights. You want to make sure you have no reds. If you do get a red indicating a failure, it means you probably made an incorrect exposure, you read it incorrectly, or worse yet, there may be something wrong with the system that really needs attention or recalibration. That's our diagnostic tool.